Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a LoRa radio repeater, and we'll be using the E32 series LoRa radios from eBite, which you can see on my breadboard. So this is a 915T20D LoRa radio module. It runs on the 950 megahertz ISM band in North America. It has a frequency range of 902 megahertz to 928 megahertz. It has a 20 dBm RF output, which is 100 milliwatts and has an advertised range of 3 kilometers. Now it's a 3.3 volt device and it draws about 130 milliamps on transmit. Now we could get a more powerful module like this one here. This is a 915T30D. It has a 30 dBm RF output which is 1 watt and has an advertised range of 8 kilometers. Now to get the advertised range indicated in the data sheet we need a visual line of sight between the transmitter and receiver we also need a radio line of sight between the transmitter and receiver. Now a radio line of sight involves Fresnel zones. So our Fresnel zones have to be free of obstructions or else we'll have loss of signal. Now a Fresnel zone is a 3D elliptical region between the transmitter and receiver which has to be free of, of obstructions. Now if we can't do that, if we have our link and we cannot have a radio line of sight or we can't have a visual line of sight, then we could go into building a repeater like this one here. So we have a we have a module, a LoRa radio module, and a microcontroller, and it's a store and forward device. So it takes the data input, the data packet, it stores it, and it retransmits it to get our desired range. Okay, I have my LoRa repeater powered up by my USB connector, which is connected to my propeller microcontroller, which is feeding 3.3 volts to my LoRa radio module. Now I have another LoRa radio off camera, which will simulate my sensor out in the field, and it will send a data packet to the repeater to be repeated. Now I have a receiver on so we can actually monitor the data packet from my sensor and then we can actually monitor the packet being repeated and when the packet's being repeated this LED will come on indicating this module is transmitting. So I'll send the data packet from the field to be repeated and now there will be a delay and there she, there she was repeated. I'll do it again. Sent. Repeated. I'll do it again. Sent. And there it is being repeated by the LoRa radio repeater. Okay, I have an RF field strength meter powered up so we can monitor the sensor out in the field sending the data packet. And then we can actually see the repeater repeating that data packet. So I'll send the data packet from the field. There it is there. Now it'll be repeated by the repeater. Okay, I have real term up and running on my computer. It's a serial terminal program, and it's connected to my LoRa radio, which is simulating my sensor out in the field. And I can send the data packet, hello world LoRa repeater, that's my data packet, the ASCII string, with a carriage return and line feed. So I'll send the packet, it'll be repeated, and then you'll see it decoded on the decode screen. So I'll send that packet, and it'll be repeated, and it's decoded up top, hello world LoRa repeater. I'll do it again. And there it's being repeated. So this is my little test program, how I test my repeater by sending data packets and then monitoring the data packet that was repeated. Okay, here's our basic repeater setup. So we can see our LoRa base station over here and all our sensors out in the field trying to send sensor data to the base station, but it can't because of this big hill or mountain that's in the way. So on top of the hill or mountain, we apply the repeater so now all the LoRa modules in the field are pointing to, re to the repeater and all the data will be sent up the repeater, stored and forward and sent back down to the base station where they'll be received. Okay, here's my propeller flip that I'm using for my repeater. And you can see there the chip it has eight 32-bit microcontrollers and they're labeled 0 to 7 and they're called COGS, similar to a gear and a machine. So in COG number 2, I actually have my LoRa module connected through the RS-232 port into cog number two and it's taking data from the field and it's storing it and forwarding it and sending it back to the base. Okay my store and forward buffer that's running on my propeller microcontroller is a first in first out buffer which you can see here. It's a 256 byte buffer and right now it's empty and you can see there's two pointers. There's a next byte pointer and a last byte pointer. The next byte pointer indicates which byte is available to be taken out and the last byte is the last byte that was put into the into the buffer. 
So we'll send some data. Now I'll read the buffer. And you can see it sees hello world, Laura repeater, text. I came in with the carriage return line feed. Now the next byte, 7622, that's the next byte that's available. That's the capital H. And the last byte is 763C, which is our line feed. So I haven't taken anything out. So my next packet will be added on. So we'll have a look. And there's two packets in the buffer ready to be taken out. So we start at 7622 and we could take out 54 bytes and that will empty the buffer. Okay, the circuitry to build a LoRa radio repeater is fairly simple. All you need is a LoRa radio module and your favorite microcontroller. Write some code for a first in first out buffer for your store and forward. And you can also get into the higher powered LoRa radio modules like this one watt module and your distance will be dramatically increased. And it's good to get the, the repeater up as high as possible, say up on a mountaintop. So a ham repeater site would be a good place uh, to mount one of these repeaters. And also get yourself a good antenna, a good omnidirectional antenna, and a good match to the radio, and a low loss line to the antenna, so you get a nice donut shaped pattern for your repeater. Now I have made a video on how to build your own monopole ground plane antenna for 950 megahertz using a female chassis mount end connector and it works out very well but I had a lot of viewers comment that there was hard to find this connector so I've built a variation of this uh, monopole ground plane antenna using a BNC connector which is maybe easier to get so here it is here so I'm using a PC board a copper clad board about an inch square and then I soldered my radials on the bottom and there's your BNC connector on the bottom and this antenna works out very well that you could use for the LoRa repeater. Okay, I have my BNC monopole ground plane antenna connected up to my vector analyzer. And you can see I'm getting a VSWR of 1.05 and I'm getting a return loss of 30. So it's really good. This is a really good antenna that we could use for our LoRa repeater. Okay, so that was a little insight on my LoRa radio repeater. Now there are three videos that actually go along with this video. The first one is how to build a LoRa antenna. And the second one is point to point and point to multipoint, which describes how to target the repeater by using a coded header, which is very important. And the third one is general repeater operation. So I'll put a link in the description box of those three videos. You can have a look at those three videos. And then you can build your own LoRa repeater to make your system very reliable.